Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to trying this. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Chow with Lau. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of the most iconic Chinese dishes, char siu pork. And I'm going to show you my new secret weapon and how to make sure that you roast it absolutely perfectly every single time. Let's do this guys. And of course, the first thing we're gonna start with is the pork itself. I've got a loin joint here. You can use fillet of pork if you like, or a shoulder joint, whatever you can get your hands on, we can make it taste absolutely amazing. The recipe is gonna be exactly the same. And the best thing about it is it's really, really easy to do. So obviously the first thing we're gonna do is to prepare the pork. I'm gonna take the string that holds it together off naturally. And then we're gonna take the skin or the rind off because we don't eat that when we're having the char siu. I've got five cloves of garlic here, which I'm gonna just bash up. Take the roots and the tops off, like so. Now I'm gonna take roughly a thumb-sized piece of ginger like that. And you don't have to peel it or anything, just roughly chop it. And just give it a bash, bruise it up, get the juices going. So we're gonna bring our pork back into play here. Just gonna chuck in the garlic and the ginger. To that, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of sesame oil. Four tablespoons of honey. And this is gonna give us our lovely sweetness. That characteristic char siu sweetness. One tablespoon of dark soy sauce. Three tablespoons of light soy sauce. Three tablespoons of hoisin sauce. One tablespoon of yellow bean sauce. And if you can't get hold of yellow bean sauce, because I know some of you have trouble finding it, just add another tablespoon of hoisin sauce instead. That's all good. Now add two tablespoons of Shaoxing rice wine. And if you can't get hold of that, then white wine or dry sherry will be absolutely fine. Now I'm gonna add two teaspoons of five spice powder, a little grind of salt, but not too much because we've got quite a few salty ingredients in there already. A grind of black pepper. And finally, two teaspoons of corn flour or cornstarch, which are the same thing if you're not sure. And the corn flour is to thicken the marinade a little bit because I want it to stick to the pork as well as absorb into it. And now it's time to get it all mixed together. And then thoroughly, at the same time, thoroughly coat our pork with this amazing smelling, and I'm sure delicious marinade. Okay, give it a good mix together. Always good to use hands. As you can see, the skin's coming off the garlic. It doesn't matter. All we want is for the flavor of the garlic to permeate into this juicy piece of pork. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so if you can, if you can resist the temptation and not try to make this dish at too much of last minute, you need to let that sit overnight if possible. You can get away with two to three hours, but it won't quite be the same. Trust me, I've tried. And although it's still really nice, this overnight is just gonna be absolutely mind-blowingly good. On we go with the cling film. So this is gonna go into the fridge now and I'll see you tomorrow. 
Right guys, so this has been sitting in my fridge overnight. I've just got it out and it is smelling awesome. You can see that the colors have started to seep into the meat. So the flavors are gonna run really, really deep into this one. I can't wait to try this because I've got a feeling it's gonna be absolutely epic. So I'm gonna put it into a baking tray. And I'm gonna pour a little bit more of the marinade on it. Now I'm gonna keep some aside because I'm also gonna be using the marinade to baste the meat as it's roasting in the oven. So this is my new secret weapon for roasting the perfect joints of meat. It's from a company called Arm Eater who are kindly sponsoring my video today. Now the reason why I'm really excited about this is because I've wanted one of these for a long time. I've just never really been able to justify getting one because obviously you can stick to timings, do a bit of maths and normally you get a good result. But there's always that risk that it could all go wrong or you get your calculations wrong. And it's always disappointing when you roast a piece of meat and it goes wrong. This temperature probe from Arm Eater can take all the guesswork out of roasting your meats and deliver you a perfect joint of meat every single time. Love the way it works because this is a totally rechargeable wireless temperature probe. It sits in its case whilst you're not using it and charges up through the case. When you push this button it shows how it's recharging. Now even though it's really really tiny it contains wireless technology and uses Bluetooth to communicate to the case and the case then relays that to your phone where you can control and monitor what you're roasting through the Arm Eater app. And using the app is simplicity itself. All you've got to do is select the type of meat you're cooking and then pick from the levels of doneness that are on the app. For example, if you're cooking beef, you have the options of rare, medium rare, medium, medium well and well done. What you gotta do is pick the one that suits what you're doing today, pop your temperature probe into your meat. When the meat heats up to the correct temperature that matches the doneness you've selected, it will send an alert to your phone telling you that your meat is ready. It's absolutely foolproof. If you're interested in this product, I will leave you the link in the description of the video below. So we're in the app now. To select our cook, we pick the joint of meat that we're gonna use, which today obviously is pork. And we're gonna pick well done because nobody really should be in pork medium rare, right? Uh, I'm not sure what they've got that on the uh, app for, but maybe in different parts of the world, people think differently. I don't honestly know. And then we're gonna push start to cook. Using the probe is simplicity itself. What we need to do is find the thickest part of the meat and then we're gonna insert it, stick it right in. And that'll give us the temperature for the middle of the meat, which is obviously what we're looking for because uh, if you put it near the edge, that'll give us a false reading because obviously it cooks from the edge inwards in a normal conventional oven. Right guys, it's oven time. I've got the oven at gas mark for 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 177 degrees Celsius or centigrade. I'm gonna be basting the meat with the marinade probably three or four times during cooking and that won't affect the temperature readings we get in because obviously it's measuring what the temperature is in the middle of the pork, which is perfect. It'll let us know when it's done. And what, the way it does that is it'll send an alert to the app, which will give us an alarm and that will alert us to get the pork out of the oven. And fingers crossed, it'll be perfect. So just to let you know, we're four minutes since we stuck the probe into the, into the beef. Just gone into the oven, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, let's see how we get on. Yep, so I'm gonna be basting this two or three times and this is to maximize the flavor and also to try to keep the pork as moist and juicy as possible. I'm also gonna turn over the pork so it's gonna cook evenly on both sides. There you go, guys. Check that out. The colors, the smell, unfortunately you can't do the smell, but oh my gosh, it's amazing. Look at it, look at that color. Beautiful, I can tell already it's full of flavor. 
So I'm gonna cover this up with more foil and let it rest for 20 minutes. And finally, I'm gonna turn this marinade into a lovely barbecue sauce. All I'm gonna do is heat it up in my wok and thicken it with a little bit of corn flour or cornstarch slurry, and that'll make an amazing barbecue sauce to complement and to give even more flavor to the pork. We are gonna have so much flavor in this dish. It's gonna be off the scale, guys. So I'm gonna take my marinade, I'm gonna strain it so we don't get all the lumpy bits of garlic and ginger. All the flavor should be really nicely imparted into the sauce now, into the marinade, and which we are gonna turn into a sauce. Okay. And all we're gonna do is heat it up and thicken as necessary, to be honest. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water, just to give it a little bit more volume before we thicken it up. And if you remember, I did put some corn flour in the marinade when I was making the marinade. So there is a chance that we might not even need any thickening. All right, I'm not gonna have to thicken this, guys. Look at it. It is already nice and thick. And I'm not trying to make a gravy for it. I'm just gonna drizzle this on as a little bit of barbecue sauce. And then we don't need to smother it. We just maybe enhance it. It's almost adding an extra layer of glaze to it, which would be cool. There we go. There you go, guys. Let's take the temperature, our trusty R meter temperature probe. Let's see how well it did, shall we? Okay, it's been resting for 20 minutes now, so it should be absolutely perfect. So I'm just gonna slice it up. Oh, check it out. Oh yes, oh yes, can you see that? That is absolutely gorgeous. I am so happy with that. Look at how juicy that is still. Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to trying this. Gonna drizzle some of this barbecue sauce. And like I said, don't wanna drench it, just a little bit. Delicious. All right guys, the moment of truth and this for this very auspicious occasion, I've brought in my taster in chief, who is? Kobe. Kobe, yes. Okay, you can have first go at this. Yeah, how do you feel? You feeling good? Yeah. Right, taste it then. Let's see how we go. What's it like? Oh, I wanna dive in. Perfect. Perfect, really? I didn't make him say that. Did I make you say that? Mm -mm. No, thank you. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me have a go. Wait, I'm finished. You can stand up here if you like. Okay. Bit of water. It's very warm today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, summer has suddenly hit with Avengers. Right. That's really good. I don't know why I'm sounding surprised. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Um, it's juicy, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Juicy, tender. It's not dry at all. Now, and pork. Not tough no, pork can go really dry, can't mm -hmm. it? And really tough. Flavors. What do you think of the flavors? Mm -hmm. Flavors are amazing. That barbecue marinade that we did, Chinese char siu. Everything has just just made it taste really, really authentic. That five spice, you can get all the flavors from that. And the honey, that gives it the sweetness. The hoisin and the yellow bean sauce just comes together absolutely amazingly. I'm so, so happy with this. Hmm, it's dinner time, isn't it? True, because yep. it's like really night time. And I've got to say. And it's Saturday. It's Saturday, yeah. I've got to say, I know I like my gadgets, but this really is not a lifesaver, but a really, really handy little gadget. If I'd known this, I would have got one ages ago. And it really, it just gives you that accurate 
temperature of the internal of the meat, which means that you're never gonna over or under cook it. It's just such a simple, but such a great little thing. So thank you once again to Arm Eater for sponsoring this video. You can find the product if you wanna check it out. It'll be in the links below, in the, in the description below, and you can have a look for yourself. Like I said, if you buy one, then I get a little bit of a kickback, but it doesn't cost you any extra. The price is always the same anyway. So it's a win-win situation. But honestly, it works. I mean, that's just, it just simply works. Cool. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been a real pleasure making this particular video. So much fun and such a nice dish. Enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you're doing, and smash the like button and hit the notifications and definitely subscribe. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.